I just want to understand, sometimes I think about it, why would a human in this world do this to somebody? Why would, what is he gaining from it? What is he like, gaining from all day, all night, basically focusing and, and going on just doing bad and, and manipulating people, abusing people, torturing people? What? I don't think they'll get away with it. I don't. Levtar is a Jewish cult based out of Guatemala with around 300 people there. And it is so unfortunate. I sat down this week with Mendy Levy, a survivor, a boy who unfortunately was born into that cult and he escaped, he found freedom. And I talked to him about his experiences there, what he's learned after he's escaped and what are his plans to help the people who are still currently being brainwashed by Lev Tahar. Lev Tahar, they advocate for a child marriage, inflict harsh punishments, even for minor transgressions, and requires women and girls as young as three years old to be completely covered up with robes their entire lives. This episode is more serious and we talk about really difficult things. So this is not for all ages. This is honestly the second interview I've done with Mendy. We did one entire interview, but there were so many times in it that was just too hard for Mendy to talk about the abuse. So we sat down again and just really delved into it. It is not easy to hear about all the terrible things that Lev Tara is doing. This episode is in memory of Shem and David Ben Yaakov Shleima, as well as Miriam Sarbas Yaakov Moshe. You will hear about an incredible book that will transform your Jewish home that you need to get. And we have special people who are subsidizing the cost there. You'll hear about that in this episode. You'll also hear about an incredible podcast in Yiddish by one of the biggest Jewish celebrities out there, Shmuel Younger. You can hear more about that. And also stick around to the very end. I have a lot of thoughts, particularly on this episode that I want you to hear after you hear an entire conversation with Mendy. He's a brave young man. And here is our conversation. I'm Yaakov Langer, and you're listening to Inspiration for the Nation. Let's take me back to the beginning, before you were born. Where are your parents from, and how they, how did they get involved in Levtar? So my parents were originally from Israel, Morocco, and Tunisia, like they're you know Middle East. Um, Left the heart started off in Israel. Mm. It was a very open place, the most welcome place for anybody, any schlepper, any like guy could get in over there because in order to make people like you and believe in you, you have to give them something that they will that will suck them into you, you know what I mean? So he started being very loving, very welcome. That's how every call will start. They're not gonna right away start, oh, I'm controlling you, you can't do this and this and this, you can't eat this and this, you can't talk to the who did this, you know what I mean? So he had to start very slowly, and it was being so like- and it was one person behind it originally? One person. Who was his name? It was Shlomo Albrand, the rabbi, original rabbi from Left Horror. So slowly, slowly, after years of years of manipulating with his, with his ways of, he has his ways of doing it, you know, some people started believing in him. And slowly, slowly, my father got chapped into it and he started realizing this is the right place and they love me, they care for me, and, and like, you know what I mean? And after a nice 20, 30 years or 40 years of being there, they killed him. Wow, okay, well. Not 40 years, because he passed away when he was 46, so that's definitely not 40 years. 30 years. Yeah, or something. Wild, okay. He got so, in there when he was like so 17, 18. Your, your, your mother was introduced to Lev Tahar through your father? So no, my mother was introduced to life to her f from her father. Mm. My parents weren't married when they got they joined. They got married over there. Ah, oh, they got married at life to her. Exactly. Ah, ah, interesting. They're shadchanim, I guess. In <laughs> <laughs> they do a ridiculous shadchanim. They take they take a fifteen year old girl with a thirty one year old guy. Mm. Like they do it all the time. No, and it's not an, is it an option for the girl. Or it's not like that she has an option. She has to whatever the leaders decide. She has to take. There's no yes or no. That's wild. Okay, so how many? How many siblings do you have? Right now I have 11. Mm -hmm. My mother got remarried with another guy and left to her after I left. When you say remarried, is that by her choice? Nothing is by, cho by choice. In Life Star, there's no choice. It's, you live in control full time. So when my mother got remarried, she had a, new, she had a baby with a new husband. Mm -hmm. So I would call it like, I, before I was 10, I was, I was a family of 10, now it's 11. I'm the third in the family. I have an older sister and an older brother after me, before me, and that's it. I'm the third one. Okay, so so what was, where did you grow up? Where was your childhood based out of? What country? So I born in Canada, North Montreal, 
uh, when I was like 11 years old, 12 years old, we moved to Guatemala. And uh, then... Okay, so we'll then, get to Guatemala. But before then, what was Montreal life like? I, I guess you guys were part of Leif Tahar at that so, point, yeah, right? I born in Leif Tahar. It was already their private mm-hmm. community, the private property, their private, like, older, like, you know what I mean? How it was, it was definitely wrong. It was, But it was better than it was in Guatemala. Mm-hmm. But, like, what part? What what parts were, were did you see? Again, you grew up in it, so... It, it, you're, they had I, to keep certain boundaries mm-hmm. because... Canada is a, is a, a, there's a government and the police is very strong and the government is very on top of everything. So they had to, they had to try to be cool. You know, they, w- they but they were doing terrible things. They would like take a 16 year old with a, again, like with the overage guy, you know, like play around with a lot all the time. And they were like hit people and like all these things they would still do it, but quietly, like not so as much as they're doing it now. And were your parents always team Lev Tahar, like they were, I guess, brainwashed. Again, my father, when he grew up in Israel, he was very secular. He went to a mixed school. He was not re- so religious. I mean, my whole family as of now, they're still like, uh, um, not so like from in Israel. My roots is very Sephardi, very, you know, chill. Um, you know, the way my father met Lev Tahar was my father met the rabbi of Lev Tahar on a bus in Israel and he started to have a conversation with him and he started like, he has his way. Some people have a power. They have a way of talking that will, get anybody, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So my father had a conversation with him and then he started going there and come back home and going back, going back and forth. And at one point he was like totally in and like now, so I was born in it, you know what I mean? Everything was. So so what was your, before Guatemala and we'll get to there, but like, what was the structure of your day there? Like you went to yeshiva growing up? You went like, what was a day in the Hader, life? I mean. Yeah, okay. I was younger. Yeshiva starts at 13. But cheder is like a, you should basically like a little kid's cheder yeshiva it would start let's say eight o'clock in the morning finish at four or five and they treated you well there when or? i was a bit older they would have night time like night cider they mm-hmm. call it and then and then what was your home like like did you have a tv no. <laughs> tv and leaf tower are you insane no i don't know yeah i don't know again are I, you I, missing I, do you want a needle <laughs> so so what like what was it like it was like ultra hasidish but also mixed with culty very no, no. everybody has to be the same if there's one bad apple they'll, they'll try to kick them out everybody has to be the same everybody has to be on their path on their mindset which what do they what do they deem as the the goal of life what how do they they don't have i think their goal is to get everyone in full control and believe and believe in them fine we but, basically but, live but for their for their Wait, for what they want. What do we they basically sell live it for as? What they, want. What do they, they sell it as Yiddishkeit, though, no? They sell it as Yiddishkeit, and that's that's a problem. Mm-hmm. They use religion as a tool to manipulate, which is very wrong. That's, that's and terrible. it's basically like abusing the idea of religion. And then people get out of there and are like, should I stay religious? Is it, you know, like they get so confused. Like everything they told me was a lie until now. Why should I believe everything I'm seeing outside? It takes a lot of processing. Right, yeah, I can't even imagine that. All of that. So, so could you share some stories that that happened, whether with you or just that happened there, to just display to people how bad of a place Leif Tahar is? <sighs> There's so many stories. I mean, I give me say. one. Give me one. The fact that the leaders could decide today that I want to take away your kids from your mother. I want to take away kids from a family, from a father and mother, because I I think they're not giving the best chinuch. So they would place all the children in different houses, different like, different families, because maybe they will hit him better than 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 his mother. And every mother and father is forced to hit every like. Literally, when you come to school every day, Heder, you have to bring a form that the mom has to fill out. Did you say Krishna? Did you say Amapel? Did you wash Nigelvasser? Did you do this? Were you were you speaking? This, were you saying a misa? Did you say a lie? All these they have to write everything, give it to the Rabbi Heder, and. If you did something wrong, he had punished you in front of all the kids. I remember even there was boys that would, if they were so scared, like, it's not like giving a patch. It's not like small smacks. It was like big, big, big makas with a belt on the, t- they were my mamish. So some boys were so scared that they would like erase things before coming, making X's and this. I remember this. Don't ask. Oh, yeah, that's very difficult. Did you ever encounter any good people there? It was, it was always going to be some good people. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
Leftar is a big group. I'm not. That doesn't mean everyone is a leader. Everyone is an abuser. Mm-hmm. Some, most of the people are victims. There's maybe 15 controllers, 15 leaders, but everyone is like victims. They they just follow a path mm-hmm. that they don't even know what's going on in this world. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Uh huh. So there's there's some people that they're. It seems like a lot of brainwashing. At what point in your life did you be like? this there's something so off over here again because it's all that you really knew you know you didn't have exposure definitely to the- but because since you're young they, they put you in your head that this is the only place and if you leave this is this is gonna happen to you and if you go to israel you do the worst they, they said don't put go it to in your head since you're a little child and hate that they talk about it all the time so in your head like when you leave you know you're gonna die you know you're gonna go to hell for the rest of your life like to me to be honest at this point i made a decision it's either there's no God or either there's no Gehenna. It can't be both. Because because a father has unconditional love. Obviously, if, if, if someone is misbehaving, you have to give him a little smack or not, I don't know, a smack, but you have to give him a little punishment mm-hmm. so he doesn't do it again because you love him. You don't want him to do something dangerous, you know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. But it can't, but they, what they tell you all the time is if you don't follow them, you're going to go to Gehenna. That means you're gonna be in fire for the rest of your life. Once you once you die, you're gonna be burned. You're gonna be relived and burned again, and like all these nonsense. Like I told him, that it's either there's no, either there's a Gehenna, which I don't believe in God, because or there's God that loves us. Because if somebody loves you, he's not gonna punish you like that. What do you think about that? I maybe I, I'm thinking wrong. No, I, I believe in God. This is not like right, right, right. I, I chose to believe in God to than believe in hell. Wow, that's very powerful. That's you know? very powerful, and. Unless I'm wrong, I don't know. I, I'm. This is what I. I decided. I can't have. I can't think about both. It doesn't. It doesn't work together. Mm-hmm. I meant your, your the your upbringing of how they framed everything in like such absolutes and 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 meaning like it's complete. Like if you don't do everything we're saying, then you are gonna burn for the rest of eternity. That's, little, that's in, like they very say it with hard. details. Like as a little, imagine as a little kid, they have classes with you saying the Shvarta Maluchim. I don't know if you you know what I speak Yiddish a little bit. And not so much. Shvarta Maluchim means like I don't even know how to say it. English is not my first language. I yeah, that Shvarta. It means like the scary animals, basically. I, I, if that's the right way to explain it will rip you off your skin and like hang like you demons with your tongue type of thing? and do and wow. hang you with your feet and how and, old were you when they're telling you that and take metal and burn you like eight years old what, six so years old like what, young 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 like, what part of you you sleep at night and you think about oh, i did this aver like i'm gonna go through this and when i'm dying like i'm gonna go through this and like you know what i mean so i'll say this um i think that the, the the idea of telling children again nothing they did i can imagine is normal or healthy and it's just so crazy but i think the idea of of teaching your children about not doing the wrong thing and the, even the concept of heaven and hell which which i you know I, I believe in hashem and i believe in that there's an afterlife and and if you do good things you go to a good place and if you don't do good things you have to go to a place that it helps cleanse you which that i guess, could be that right. could be, but not the way they subscribe right to, right not, not like this is a but, lot. But even so, like, as I'm personally going through life, like, as I'm, like, looking at it, like, back in the day when I was younger, I was, like, so small. So you're trying to do things to live your life because, hey, then I'm going to get rewarded. But as you get older, at least my relationship with Judaism isn't, oh, I'm going to do this mitzvah or I won't do this avera, not because I'm going to get olam haba or I, I'll go to Gehenna. It's more of there's a relationship between me and God. God is, God is great. He's good. And I want to be... I want to be connected to him and I, I it's a relationship. I don't I don't want to do the bad things because I love him and he loves me and and it's a growth type of thing. That's more of I mean you asked the question so I'm just I asking. I agree, I agree. I still don't know if like it's bad because I believe I don't believe in bad anymore. Right. <laughs> well, basically. in your defense you 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 I, I'm saying with the Abishter. Right. I'm saying with the Abishter. I'm saying obviously there's bad things could happen to anybody. Right. You know, we don't control the world. I'm saying I, like after you die, you're going to go up. That's what I mean by bad. Right. Well, you you also were in such an environment that was so toxic and and just so forceful. And, and I, I think to me, you're a kid Hashem. The fact that you walk out of that and you say, I do, I believe in God and I believe in Hashem. And you have every ability to really see everything that happened and say, I'm done with religion. I'm walking like you're wearing a yarmulke. You have a mug and dove. Like the fact that you're like, no, no, no. I, there's something to Yiddishkeit still. Not totally not how they did it. Mm-hmm. Like, how would you define them? Like, are they, is there any form of Yiddishkeit there or? Well, there isn't. And I'll tell you why. Because a, a real Jew keeps Shabbos, keeps kosher, keeps the essentials at least. 
By like them, a real Orthodox Jew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. I'm saying it's not about a real Jew. They're real, they're real from ones. Mm-hmm. Even not, the Shabbos is, is just basic. It's right, basic yeah. math, you know? By them, the second again, it comes to their leadership, to their decisions, there's no Shabbos no more. In fact, one time they decided they want the whole community to move to Mexico now. In the middle of Shabbos, Friday night, they took three buses, the whole community moved up to Mexico. In Shabbos, like literally Shabbos, we're driving down to Mexico. Where is religion coming in here? The, the rabbi decided for his safety, maybe someone wants, to ca- someone wants to catch him because he did all this nonsense and all these crimes, so he was so scared that everybody has to do Chil Shabbos. But that's fine, because the rabbi said, you realize how this is going? Yeah, yeah. They, they, it's, it's. I don't believe this is a religion. I, I th- everybody over there thinks this is a religion. But after I left, I realized this was all a tool. This was all a game. So I listen. Mm-hmm. You know. That's crazy. Okay, so tell me. Let's let's go to Guatemala now. What what was your experience like there? And 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 from there is that was the last connection that you had to them. But what was life in Guatemala like? Life in Guatemala was hell. This was real hell. And I can tell you the reason why they left the Guatemala. Not the reason why is because in Canada they can't do whatever they want. In Guatemala, the, the, the law is so weak. Everybody does, you know, Mexicans, like they do whatever they want basically. And Guatemala is even like a lower country, like it's a small country, Guatemala, no one cares. And they, they realized they could do whatever they want. They started off in the city, they like, I think, I don't know, bought or rented a big building and they saw like the police were still getting a little involved in them. Then they decided, you know what? They opened their own property. You know those highways where you only see trees, like you could drive for hours, you only see trees in like fields and like empty. They basically went in such a place, like it's two hours from the city and basically had tractors cleaning everything and they basically built their own their own space. They built over their tents and uh, whatever. And uh, how, the- how often were outsiders coming in? From out of, uh, well, they had employees like uh, Guatemalan people uh-huh. that were working like and staff. like- Did they realize how well they were, they had, it was? You know, I mean, they don't care for them. They don't. They look at us as as rich people in Guatemala. Like you mm-hmm. know, the people there, like the mamas, don't have what to put in their mouth. Wow. A lot of them. Mm-hmm. At what point in Guatemala did you realize that things were way off than what was happening in Canada? Because they did it too quick. They didn't. They didn't like slowly, slowly started building rules, building more problems. They did it right away. Like what? Like give me examples of more rules that they had, or the more abuse going on. Saying you can't talk for a year. You just can't talk. You're Tana's not allowed dibber. to talk. Tana's dibber. The rabbi said Tana's dibber. You have to. Why? Give, for everyone. You have to have every week. You have to. Have to usually in Cheder, you only in Cheder, you have to write a little paper with a few questions for the rabbi. If you did this in this Avera. You had to write every week a report. You had to fill out a report to send to the Rebbe's house. You had to go to the Rebbe's house and he would tell you, I know if you did something wrong. So you have to, and we were actually scared. We thought actually the Rebbe sees on my face if I did something wrong. Because we were so brainwashed our whole life. I could see on Ishtern that you did this and this. I could read on Ishtern that you did this and this. In your forehead, yeah. You know, like that's how they talk. And like, imagine as a baby, I, that's how I speak to you. You're going to believe it. If you, right. don't know about anybody, if you don't know about anything else, I mean. And everyone around you is, is saying, hey, that's, this is true. Exactly. Like, you know. So, so wh- it's not only this. There were many things. Yeah, many things. From 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 living in houses, we're living in tents. We're living, you know, like it's so many. I have to think about the details, but it was a lot. It was a lot. It started making forcing people to get married very young. He said thirteen and twelve have to be married. He said he wants to do everyone's chasana, everyone's wedding, in the day of the of the bar mitzvah. Wow. He says that's the goal, to put them in the chuppah and they have the bar mitzvah. Did, and he actually started doing it. How old were you when you escaped? I was 15, the beginning were of 15. Were you married? 15. Did they force you to get married? They met? tried. They, they tried. actually tried. I was almost at a point, but I wasn't. Thanks God. Imagine. That's that's wild. So w- They don't care. Cousins would, would do uh, mm. anything, anything. As long as not brothers, but anything. Wow. That's hard. So, so w- what happened with your father? My father, he, so right now in Guatemala, this is another thing that changed since they moved to Guatemala. So they had, they were having fans around, they had a full-time security, it was very complicated. So my father, so no one could just leave just like that. If, even if you need a medical, if anything needs to be through them, it needs to go through them first. And my father needed to go for medical help and they didn't allow him and it was passing time and it was going and getting worse and for worse. What, what did he have? He had an effect. Well, we didn't know what it was, mm-hmm. but afterwards we found out it was an infection in his blood. Ah, but and something they, was off about something him. Something was off. He wasn't feeling well, but you know, he was surviving at home another day. He wasn't mm-hmm. eating and nothing. They have their own doctors. 
the doctor came in my house and put him in my vein and let him hang in the house. What, what, so you, what so medical just, background when you say they have doctors? They went to school? I would say I just, uh, I don't know. I, they, 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 they have some medical experience. Mm -hmm. I don't know to what extent. Right. So um, they came in, they put in an IV. IV, and that's, that's it. it. So then it was getting worse and worse and worse and worse. At one point, he was almost dying. When he was like momish at the point of dying, uh, my mother sent my mother's brother to go speak to some of them, the leaders, and say like he's almost dying or something. And then they took him to the hospital last minute. Literally a few hours later, he passed away. There was not, they, they couldn't do anything. It was too late. So if they would have let him a little earlier, he would be saved. And that's it. He passed away. And 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 after he he died, did did life get way worse? Or of course, it was getting way worse. Why? You know, did, like because everyone had control over our family. Like they were like, okay, your mommy can't take give chinuch for you. Your mommy can't take care of you. Like we have to take care of everything. Everything was under them. They were doing terrible things to our family afterwards. Wow. So at what they were carrying my sister on the street, like schlepping her on the street to a different family, and she was screaming on the, on the hair? street. On the block, on the on the block with rocks and everything. Wow. The different and she was crying. Mama, the worst retzicher you could think of. They were doing. They 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 dismantled your family. They they pushed Completely. you all to different families and. And guess what? Besides my my youngest baby, but everyone else were were taken to different families, and they were a little later. They were getting my mom remarried with another life to her, another life to her guy, and then they were. They were taking his kids, the 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 the, the, the left our guy. They got my mom. My mom should take care of them. And our me, my brothers, my sister can't go say can't go to my mom's house. And if you go, would get punished. It happened a few times. Me, and my brother tried going. With the Weingartens, I didn't, the Weingartens were the main leaders at one point, and they were taking care of us every time we went. One time, my brother went. He went to say hello to my mother. Like he took a, a chair and he broke it on his back. Wow. Like they don't care. It's like it's like you're it's like a piece of rock. It's like I don't have a problem breaking this glass. They have no problem doing it to you. We'll be right back to this week's episode with Mendy and stick around because he's about to open up about what he personally feels about Leiftar and his message to them and to the world. But first, let me tell you about our incredible favorite book at Inspiration for the Nation. It's called From Boys to Men. It is written by our very own Dr. Shlemy Zimmerman, who we are working on something really big for you guys. But this book is, I'll read it, Guiding Our Sons and Students in the Ways of Kedusha. Uh, the forward is by Rabbi Harav Aaron Feldman. There's incredible people backing this book. It is for parents. So if you are, I know we have kids watching this. So if you're a kid, this book isn't for you. But if you're a parent, the book is for you. And you could get the book in the store for, I think $23. So if you want to go to the, the store to buy the book, you can pick it up. But if you go to livingthechaim.com slash Dr. Z, that's D-R-Z, you could get the book there for just $18. That includes shipping uh, for, for right now. It's for people in America. Um, but yeah, the book, including shipping, will will get it to you for $18 through really generous donors and sponsors and people who have said, hey, this book is so important. And what does this book talk about? It, it talks about helping teach your children before they hear it from other people in their lives about about being married and how to have children and talk about puberty and just becoming a man, right? So if you have a child in your house that you want to teach them in the most proper ways with a clinical, a credible psychologist who's working along the lines of Das Torah to put out such an incredible book. It is by far the most important book that I have read this year. I, I still have young children, so didn't have a conversation with them yet, but it is such a good foundation for building a strong home and it could be yours for $18. So go to livingthechaim.com slash Dr. Z. You will, it's, it's the best investment you will ever make because it is, it's your family we're talking about and it's written so well and you deserve a book. So go ahead and grab onto this deal. Obviously, if you're in a bookstore, you could go ahead and get the book there. Okay. Again, we will be talking to Mendy. Wow, what a powerful interview. And I, I want to share my thoughts at the end. But first, I want to tell you about one of my favorite new podcasts. Okay, I have to be honest. I don't understand either. So forgive me for that because clearly you know that 
I don't from this interview, but one of my favorite guests that I've ever had on this show, Inspiration for the Nation, was Shmili Unger. Shmili, Shmili, he told me how to say his name properly, is a superstar. He is he is an incredible, incredible singer, but what he's doing now is he's using his personality. I mean, I, I've had a bunch of singers on, but he, he has such a unique personality. He's sitting down with guests or just different assortments of people but it's not like an interview kind of show. It's just really just him talking about life. It's it's fun. It's a very fun watch or listen. He's on YouTube. You can search Schmillycast or in the show notes, you could just go ahead and click on the link there. You can check it out wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, Apple, Spotify, 24-6. Shout out to 24-6. We love them there. And um, it's it's just a fun time. So yes, it is in Yiddish only, which Shmili, come on. I, I want to hear some in English, but uh, you could definitely go ahead and have a fun time. I think it's it's so important to see the 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 Hasidic culture. And I think Shmili does such a good job talking to people about life. It could be really big topics or just really small fun topics i meant they just started and his channel's blowing up there's no surprise there he is such a fun person and if you speak yiddish or you want to even just tap into the yiddish culture i heavily heavily suggest that you go and check them out we love them there and now back to my conversation with mendy the 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 main leader he there's a lot at this the point main, we're talking the, about the, the one who started a nice 15 died, people when, that are when did the main one die the main one before, died before you were born. I, I don't no, know. No, way after he way died after. in Guatemala. So you met him. like already in the in, in, in the in their, in their I don't know their camp mm -hmm. or whatever you would want to call it. Was well, what was your feelings personally when he died? I thought it was gonna get better. Mm. I, that's what I thought. This is I thought it was gonna get better. It would be less controlling, less things. Unfortunately, it got way worse. Why is that? The new one was. Uh, was was being way worse so who's than the his son his son his, his son was taking over and he became whew, mm -hmm. way well it was being much worse than the other one so how many like he like yeah. he made no rules you can't eat fish you can't drink milk you can't eat sugar only if you go to the, the honey bees and you take the, the, the you take you make the honey yourself and you see how everything you know you can't have coffee only you cut it from the tree all these things like sugar only if you go to eat like the fields where sugar grows you know it's like a it's like a little tree i don't yeah. know what it would call sugar it sugarcane i think yeah i don't know the name of it and they would cut it and melt it don't ask so much nonsense he started becoming like ridiculous so no protein no nothing bread only so they don't have yeast how would they they, they would take like a yeast, yeah. pineapple and, and and like spoil it and so, so they, they would use the what was the food like there it was not good it wasn't good it was not good everyone is hungry over there everyone is just hungry like they call people all the time after 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 I left the house saying we need money for food urgently. Like, what are you buying? Fruit and vegetables? You don't. Everyone is hungry over there because we eat. You can't be full from eating only fruit and vegetables. How how are they supported? The people they are working. People are donating money to them. How's Labor It's more the donations. Themselves? It's more the donations. Who's and donating to it's them? It's more the donations. And it's. I'll tell you the truth. They use the donations for the wrong things. They claim they call people all the time and saying we need money. Kids are we need food for kids. We need we need. They're using the money to pay the lawyers of the leaders and, and, and to get out of prison for the for the nonsense to move. The, let me ask you a question. They were not too long ago in Iran. They were in, in Europe. They were in Bosnia. They were everywhere around the world. They're running around from country to country. Who do you think is sponsoring those? How do you think that? How much do you think this cost tickets for 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 hundreds of people? This is a this is like five hundred people. You know, we're talking about 60, 70 families, 500 people. It's a lot of people. Like this cost money, moving around, food, everything. Who's sponsoring it? People outside of Latvia, no one over there is working. They have a print shop. They're claiming they're going to make money out of it. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but not really. This, I don't think this could actually pay off all these tickets, all these lawyers, all these flights. They're having money somehow. They're offering to the judge a lot of money for bail. Like who's, where are they taking the, the option of in? It's, it's, Someone is sponsoring mm -hmm. and it's a problem. That is it's a, a big problem. It's a huge problem. Sponsoring Leif Tahar is sponsoring to abuse people. It's basically giving money for a camp to abuse, continuing abusing. Because if there's no money, it will clap. Right, it will collapse. You personally, did you have fantasies of escaping or it just one day you're like, I, I. No, no, no. I've been thinking about it for a nice good amount of time. I was thinking about it and I was always scared. I was always like, what was your main concern? Like, it was main concern. To, will it actually be what they told me? I mean, this is going to happen to me and I'm going to die and this. I was always thinking about different things, you know? I wasn't really sure if I'm doing the right. I, I had a very strong guilt to do it. I feel like I'm. It's not the right thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Imagine being brainwashed the whole your whole life. You're scared to do it. Mm -hmm. 
So then what gave you the courage to it was getting get out. it was getting terrible at one point and the point where they were forcing me to get married with my cousin things got I didn't get married but right. this at that time I was like finally I'm not this, in is, this, this. Is, this is this is out were there people before you that escaped they were they, they were. were were they, they were. like legends to you like wow they that person no, got it. The, the, he, guess what in Leif the heart the whole time they're saying he's a moisture we have to pray he's gonna die but in Shmuel Nasser there's two spots where you could pray to God and ask for things and they would say they would give up papers on everyone sit there putting the names of the people that, that left Saying that you have to, you have to pray that he's gonna die. So are they praying? Should, whatever the name, let's say uh, Ori should have a miss mission. Uh, him, I'm not gonna mention names because the Chazal Shulam, no one should have a miss right. mission. There's nothing wrong with living there. The, the right thing is to live and start normal life. But that's but, a, that's but they how say they, Jove and Shmo it, should die. Because exactly. They're but with the miss mission, it says Shuma miss mission Mapula. I don't know what that means. It means like die with a very bad ending. Ah. So like a real that means trend. they're davening for you to they're die. Da- they're right davening now. for me, probably. Yeah, right. I, I didn't see, but I could imagine if they, they were doing for everyone else, why, right. why am I different? I I was exposing what they were doing. Right. I mean, you more so. Are you are you one of the people that have been exposing them the most? I mean, I, honestly, I've always heard of Levitar, but then I, I saw I the, the most, video on YouTube. I want the most viral uh, out there. Well, there's no one, there's no one out of Levitar that, that that hit uh, over six million on social on YouTube and stuff. Although I regret the video a little bit because okay. I feel like he was giving me some bad flash, like a bad feedback. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if feedback. I don't know if, what would be the right word. I I, I don't English know. Is still developing. Yeah, yeah, no. It's <laughs> honestly pretty good English. Um, I, guess, I speak Spanish before I speak English, by the way. Right, I, I could imagine. So in Spanish, we could talk quick. Yeah, right? yeah, but Sp- my Spanish is, is... Your English is better than my Spanish, put it that way. <laughs> um, what you felt like that video, I guess, made you more of a victim? Yeah, you got it, exactly. And I don't like that, because I I, 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 I was thinking... The reason why I did the video is because I was thinking maybe this is going to help get my family out, my mother out, and people will start realizing what's going on and take action and... But unfortunately, it did some. Somehow, it did help, and things did happen since then, and things moved around. But not, not really what I was expecting. Not, not even close to what I was expecting. I was expecting my family out. That's what I want. I, I would, I can't think what I suffer. They're suffering every day, and it's only getting worse. It's like it's never getting better. Brainwashing doesn't get smaller. It grows. Mm-hmm. You know, things grow in your brain. Think about it, and like. Uh, the, the, it did the opposite basically you know not the opposite but like uh, you feel like people judge you based off that video like some as if people they know do you some people they... like oh I let's say I'm a photographer I do events I do this uh, which by people... the way we're gonna put your link in the show notes if anyone wants to hire you I've seen your pictures you do <laughs> a great you. job no like the point is like some people are like I don't know this guy can't feel like he's come from left or I don't know I should trust him for my way like, I, I don't know but some people look at me as inspiration okay like I, I respect him but the truth is I'm thinking now like what does my past have to do with my specialty? Right. If I know how to, if I know how to get the job done, if this is a talent of mine, like, what does it have to do? It's I find like a Hasidic mindset. Obviously, not all Hasidim. Some people right. are very chill. Like, I'm not generalizing, but like, some people are just like how they grew up. Everything has to go. No, it's not fun. Ends. Eh, whatever. No, I, I definitely hear what you're, you're saying. The- but that part I didn't like so much. That some people like, oh, you did some with Amala, did like uh, some people look at me as a victim. They think they think I like to be sounded like a victim. They try they, they try to please me, but actually I don't like it. Right. I'm trying to be a survivor, not a victim. I'm trying to to, to, to inspire people, you know, not, not to put not to not to do the opposite. I don't want people to feel depressed after watching my story. This right. is exact. But I feel like I was portraying the video in a certain way where it's it's talking about too much negativity. Mm. Well, we live and learn, as we could say. Right. Okay. I, I hear that. And I, I think it's a little sad that, that you know, people would not hire you because of the fact that you were, you were literally born into Lev Tahar. You didn't ask for this life. And if anything, you're like, you escaped, you're trying to get away, you're trying to build your life, you're trying to build your career. And it, it is sad for people to like, you know, we were just talking right before you told me that you watched the episode with Yehuda Newman. Yeah, it was very inspiring. Actually. Yeah, Yehuda's great. And you said it hit you in a certain way, and I, I think there's like a similarity there that uh, that's why this part where I was like touched me, like I I was feeling like I'm relating to the guy, you know, right? Like, why why are you judging someone based on something, you know, like right? Has not, like meaning yes, he has a condition that makes him shorter than the normal person, but doesn't mean he's the like average person. Short person can could be wealthy, could be happy, could be could be kind. It doesn't mean yeah, anything. It's nothing to do with his character of who he is, or exactly. you know, like you, you're a photographer, you take great pictures. That's nothing to do with your past, you know. 
I, I totally hear that. So I know you've been invited on to other podcasts and other shows and, and you don't want to be labeled as the victim. You're on inspiration for the nation for a reason. What's your message to everyone, to all the all, all our listeners? I would say if you're alive, you're absolutely going through a challenge. Everyone who's alive has some challenges. I personally went through very hard challenges in my life and like uh, some things I don't even want to talk about, like very hard abuse and this, big challenges, but I would say is the main thing we have to focus on never giving up. There's always space to grow and become better. You can't give up. That's really beautiful. That's really beautiful. So the I, I saw a video also, your brother also got out. Yeah. What was that feeling for you personally when you now have a sibling on the other side? Well, my brother got out before me. Oh, he got out before he you? He got out before me. And that was actually a little push for me to, he was able to do it. Let me, tr- you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you did that. Do you do you have hope for the people still on the inside? Your mother, your siblings, family members. The truth is, it's so hard for me to even think about it. I really do have hope, and I and I've been trying. I've been putting so much energy into this. But the the thing is, I don't even know if everyone in my family wants to leave because some of them are so brainwashed. They might, when I'm gonna try to want to get them out, they might say, no, I don't want, mm. because they think they're doing the wrong thing. They're only gonna appreciate taking them out after, they were, after they're were out of this crazy cult. They realize, thanks for taking me out. I had no idea, I was just so brainwash, I didn't let you because I was so scared. And I'm saying this is all nonsense. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but I know that one of my siblings wants to get out. That I know for sure. I'm not gonna say a name because for safety reasons, but I know has Liv Tahar tried contacting you since you got they're, out? They're trying still today. They're, they're, they're like they're like looking at my social medias. They're, they're have their ways. But I have ways to look at them too. Oh, okay. Interesting. Goes both ways. I have ways to look at them too. It's inter- I mean, it's crazy that it's your life. I can see when they try to find me, when they try looking at me. Mm-hmm. Are you... Are you no, they're, they're scared of me in a way too. Yeah? If something happens to you. No, no. They tried they were doing it once and they saw what happened. Mm-hmm. Hold on, but I want to put a message out to the world. If something happens to you, is it is it because of them? It could. I mean, they have they have they have some they have some uh, wild wild personalities to them. Like where they could do, they could be very uh, aggressive with things. Mm-hmm. In fact, there was a mother that escaped with her kids, and they actually came down in Shabbos again. Again, we're proving you this is not religion. This is all about total control and, and abuse. They drove down in Shabbos. In New York, and they kept. It was actually not in New York, upstate New York, and then Catskills. Mm-hmm. I think it was Bud- Woodridge Country. Okay, somewhere Woodridge, on yeah. the, in, in the mountains, they were kidnapping a girl and a boy in Shabbos, in the middle of the night. I think it was three a.m. in the morning, Shabbos Friday night, and they kidnapped the kids back to Mexico, back to Guatemala. There's no, there's no like human rights groups that you could reach out to to like report Wally them over there. No, here in America. It's so slow the process. We tried, but the thing is, everything is so slow because there's so much donations. They have so much money. I don't mm. know. They're getting so much money somehow, and they're able to to, to get it to get around everything. You know, right? In so Guata- in Guatemala, you could buy the government money. If I let's say coming out with ten million dollars, I'm like, here, please, I am giving this to the government. Get this place. Let's get these people out. Kidnap this. Not kidnap. Arrest this leader's business. If they pay more. They will win. If we pay more, we will win. So sad that that's, that's how. That's, that's literally how the. It's a corrupted country. That's there's a reason they're there. So you, you you spoke on this before, but I I want to end off with this idea that what's so what's your relationship with Yiddishkeit now? I'm trying my best. I could say I'm trying my best. I wouldn't say I'm the firmest, but I'm 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 trying to keep the essentials. I'm really trying. Mm-hmm. It's not easy. Obviously, it's not easy for anybody. But what what part of you said that you know you you've had unfortunately such a negative view of religion not really religion how they claim what religion is but when you got out of there what what brought you back to say you know what they're still the way they see religion that's not even religion i see the beauty of yiddish guy i see the beauty of judaism what 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 did you see there and i'll be honest with you in the beginning when i left like after maybe a year after leaving i was going all the way down all the way like i was like this is not it i don't believe in it like this this is, I, I, I was questioning even God. I was like, how could God be real if he was doing all this to me? Killed my father, like let my father this, my family and all these abuse we went through. I didn't even speak about details. We went, the actual abuse they were doing to, to little kids, like the way they would torture people. I don't even know if it's the right place to talk about it. 
But like all these things, I'm thinking, how does God love me? Why is he doing all this to me? Why is he doing everything? everything why is he doing this to so many people? But it took me time to process as I was hanging around with very loving people, people, and I started realizing there's a different side to, to religion. I saw the beauty in a different way. And I saw like, there's there's two there's two different ways of looking at it. That's why I don't believe in extremism because that, that kills it. That's putting everything down. When you're like, oh, you can't, no phone, no flip phone, no text, no nothing, no nothing. At one point, when, when he has a little freedom, when he gets a little bit out of it, he's gonna drop everything. That's how, that's how a human works mm -hmm. for the most part. You know, like you put him all the way in control and then when he feels he has a little space, <sighs> plots is off. I find it very beautiful that you're, you know, working on yourself and you're growing and, you know, you're you're coming back and just figuring out your life. And I, I find that very inspiring. So. Thank you. It was not easy in the beginning, but like now I feel like I'm uh, pretty ahead. Wow. I'm wow. doing well. I'm trying. Okay. Out of curiosity, I'm playing a song. Do you know what this is? It's a candy type of like song. <laughs> I've been in music. Do you know who this is? This is Leif Tahar. Ah, it's the Leif Tahar Choir. You know, you've heard of them? I've heard of them, yeah. Yeah, they probably... I feel so bad that they are like have association just by the name. I don't think... Did, would they, they started after Leif Tahar, this, 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 this choir? I don't know who started first or whatever. I just... I, I They're great. They have nothing to do with that. I feel I bad. I feel bad. If, People search and they, they think this is Leif Tahar music. And Leif Tahar feel, music is not even allowed. I feel like... It's not even allowed now music. You're not allowed to have music. No. I feel like you're, you personally will connect to, again, there's nothing to do with the size of the name, but Leif Tahar, the band, they produce beautiful music, so. They do. Um, okay, I wanna finish off on a little more of a serious note that it seems obvious that Leif Tahar is gonna be watching this. What's your message to Leif Tahar? The truth is, I don't think I could, we could convince them otherwise because they're very strong with their beliefs and they, they, they're very confident with the terrible things they're doing, but they should know that what they're doing is very wrong and everything in life has a consequence. I don't think they'll get away with it. And I just want to understand, sometimes I think about it, why would a human in this world do this to somebody? Why would, what is he gaining from it? What is he gaining from all day, all night, basically focusing and, and going on just doing bad and, and manipulating people, abusing people, torturing people? What? I don't think they'll get away with it. I don't think this, this is 2023, there's a God, and God loves our brothers and sisters. You can't hurt them like that. I think God will take care of it at one point. Mandy Levy, thank you so much for flying here to do this. Thank you, welcome. Thank you so much for watching or listening to this week's episode. Again, go ahead and check out Cast and go ahead and check out Dr. Z's new book. You can go to livinglechaim.com slash, slash Dr. Z and get your book for just $18. Again, for parents only. It's incredible read. And this episode, if you got up to this part in this episode, this far, I want you to use the code word WOW, W-O-W. Uh, I was trying to think of like a good code word, but that's the proof that I know that you got this far. And a lot of you have been doing it. And I know you're thinking like, eh, I'm not gonna, no, go ahead and log into YouTube and leave that comment. And it's it really helps our videos and it helps me know that people are watching this. But this episode with Mendy was was very different, right? It's very obvious when I'm bringing on like the heads of an organization with helping kids with cancer. Like, yes, that's very obvious. But I think Mendy is, is someone who's truly an inspiration. It's so it's just boggling that in 2023, we have such toxic, dangerous movements going on that in no means represents the Jewish people. But this cult that's going on, Leif Tahar, they are so terrible and just torturing people and brainwashing them but you have someone like mendy who says you know what that was that that was terrible he escaped that that alone there's there's a reason why he's an inspiration to to get out of that and i think so many times in our lives we are like he said in such a bad place and think we can't get out but you know he was in a life and death kind of experience but still he got out so go ahead and realize that no matter of a bad situation that you're in you, there there is a way out but more than that mendy could have literally just gone and just lived a non-jewish life and and just the roots that he was tied into with judaism he could have just thrown it in the garbage but he is someone that is searching for purpose in his life and you at home most probably have a more 
a more simple life than many. I'm not saying you don't have any challenges, and I'm sure some people have more challenges, but typically people watching this, you don't have as many challenges as him, but still he went ahead and said, how could I connect to my roots? How can I connect to my purpose? And you every single day have that opportunity to truly be an inspiration for the nation. Go ahead and share this episode with anyone that you feel will get inspired from it, feel moved from it. Probably saw the, the video on Chizoli from Mendy. Um, it's obviously blown up and and go ahead and check out Mendy's photography. He's right now based out of uh, Montreal in Canada. If you want his services, I highly recommend. He does great stuff. So go ahead and look at the link in the show notes. And thank you for watching this episode. L'chaim. Living L'chaim.